Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Uh, so uh, I have pleasure to talk today about a specific question, which is underwater noise and its impact on the marine life in the Baltic Sea. Uh, how does it run? Next. Ah, oh, sorry. So. Uh, this research was uh, mainly done in, in frames of uh, Helcom Blues project. And uh, this project, the scheme of this project is on this slide. And underwater noise was just one part of this uh, project. So uh, in frames of this, we have made assessment of uh, both impulsive and continuous noise. So I will start with uh, impulsive noise. Impulsive noise is mainly, mainly related to human activity, such as uh, underwater uh, ordnance clearance, as uh, offshore constructions. There is no much offshore construction in, Baltic sea, in the Baltic Sea, but uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, other activities that can be seen on this slide. So uh, in red, so here you can see zoom of uh, of the Gulf of Finland, and we have basically explosions here. And the number of these explosions uh, marked here on this uh, map is quite important, but you should consider that it is made for, uh, this data is collected from period of five years since uh, 2016 to 2021. And uh, for other activities also, so, there are activities, impulsive noise activities, but basically not so much uh, when uh, related to one specific year. Uh, to make assessment, the data of, of the impulsive noise is collected in uh, ISIS hosted Helcom Impulsive Noise Registry. And every Helcom country is reporting the data uh, according to their best knowledge. And here you can see uh, the map of uh, Helcom countries and uh, their uh, registry uploads. The space is not, uh, so some periods, some countries are not reporting much. And of course, this um, uh, should be improved. So the main problem actually is uh, that registry do not have all the data uh, to, to have like uh, uh, better assessment. But in general, uh, we can state that uh, good environmental status is not much perturbed by impulsive noise, and we are good with impulsive noise, since we don't have much offshore activities in the Baltic Sea. Next, continuous low frequency noise, which is mainly related to the shipping. And uh, here is a map of uh, Gulf of Finland. You can see uh, two uh, different uh, partitions, one, the upper one showing passenger fleet AES data during August 2023, and the lower one, cargo and tanker. So you see it's two different passes, and it is possible to model shipping uh, noise uh, from this AES data, and it, it was done in frame of this uh, BLUES project. Uh, results of the assessment uh, has been used also for uh, in Holas uh, uh, assessment, and it can be this document can be found in the internet. So next, uh, I, I would show you uh, some metrics which we are using to assess impact of uh, continuous noise. Here on this map, you can see, so we have in blue is something which we can consider as natural noise. Natural noise is related mainly to uh, surface waves and wind. Then we have in red uh, shipping noise, which can be perceived in some particular point as increase of sound pressure level up to the total uh, level, which is marked here by uh, red dotted line. And so we can assess both total sound pressure level, and we can assess excess of total uh, pressure level over the natural. And so in the next, we will 
use these two different metrics for, for the assessment. As for frequency uh, ranges, uh, in acoustics we have broad uh, spectrum of uh, frequencies and uh, here we are focused on two frequency ranges, one for fish and one for marine mammals. Uh, fishes are quite sensitive to low frequency noise and so 125 kilohertz uh, DC decade was used for assessment of uh, impact on fish, and 500 hertz is more, uh, uh, more uh, useful for, to assess marine mammals, as marine mammals are better, they have better hearing in high frequency range. So 500 is uh, considered less, like uh, uh, so frequency for marine mammals. Uh, next, uh, during this uh, uh, so we have made modeling of the sound pressure in the Baltic Sea and assessment was done in this uh, Baltic Sea sub-basins uh, and uh, we have used monitoring data because of course we have model but in order to have reliable model we need to calibrate and we calibrate sound pressure uh, level model by uh, measurement results. And this measurement data was chosen for uh, uh, 2018 as a period of better coverage of data. And this monitoring is, uh, monitoring points are show, uh, shown on this uh, uh, map of the Baltic Sea. There is not much such places, but so in total it was a little bit uh, like uh, about 10 measuring points used for calibration. Uh, next, we need to, need to agree what species are uh, endangered by the noise. And uh, these species should be uh, noise sensitive, very uh, well hearing animals. And in total for the Baltic Sea, so we have Baltic herring and cod, which are considered like most sound sensitive species. And for marine mammals, so we have all marine mammals here, uh, seals, different uh, uh, species of seals, and harbor porpoise. For specifically for Gulf of Finland, we have seals and we have Baltic herring as indicator species. So we consider that if uh, something goes wrong, it goes wrong, first of all, for these, in, uh, these uh, species. Uh, what effects we are considering on the animals? It's not so easy question to understand what are the practice, what are the effects of noise. So if we talk about uh, total sound pressure level increased by the presence of shipping noise, uh, we can say that it is a disturbance effect. Disturbance meaning that a marine animal or, or fish cannot make its daily uh, uh, life procedures, so something going wrong with uh, this uh, high total sound pressure. On the other hand, we have excess level, and excess is responsible for so-called masking, meaning that in increase of anthropogenic noise, uh, uh, so is hindering hearing and perception of what is happening underwater, because all marine species are very much relying on underwater sound and vibration. So these two different effects are used, and we are doing two different assessments, both for total and excess level. Uh, next, we need to agree about uh, what we call level of onset of biologically significant adverse effects, or lobe. Lobe is a, a sound pressure level in uh, decibels, in uh, decibels versus uh, micropascal in water. And these decibels are known to, to produce significant effects. And these numbers are given here, so you can once more see that seals and porpoises are assessed for 500 hertz. But all total sound pressure numbers are quite similar. It's all about 110 decibels. As for excess level, we are using here 20 decibel excess level as a lobe value, which is quite 
a lot of energy because 20 dB meaning that if you have perceived some object, some sound uh, object, uh, some source at 100 meters, with 20 dB you can perceive same source at one meter. So it's 100 uh, times short distance of detection. Uh, so quite. And next, uh, we also need to take in this equation space parameters, space, time, frequency. So all these three parameters should be considered. For time, we consider that sound pressure level uh, metrics are all median values. We consider that one unit of assessment is one month, and so we consider monthly median sound pressure levels. As for the space, special uh, threshold, special threshold is taken to 20%, meaning that if uh, loop is exceeded at 20% of the assessed area, it is not GS. So here it is the scheme showing how it works for total sound pressure level and in the same way we do it for uh, masking and for excess level. Uh, now here are some results. So what you see here is, uh, yeah, what you see here is a map for 125 hertz in Gulf of Finland. Uh, this uh, color bar is showing uh, sound pressure level in decibels. And here we see in red area in which median SPL is exceeded. Taking into account uh, all this area of the Gulf of Finland, it's not so big. Uh, if we do the same for 500 hertz, we practically can't see anything. So lobe of uh, 110 decibels is never exceeded for this particular March, uh, in March 200, uh, yes, 2018. Uh, by the way, it is the noisiest uh, uh, months of the year because in, in spring, in early spring, uh, sound propagation conditions in Baltic Sea are, are the best. Uh, now, if we go for uh, uh, excess level and masking effects, we can see it's, it's a completely different picture. So the major part of the Gulf of, uh, Gulf of Finland is in red, meaning that uh, sound pressure level, natural sound pressure level is exceeded by 20 dB on this part, at least 20 dB, sometimes it's even more. And if we look for uh, 500 hertz and assessment for marine mammals, uh, we also see in red, uh, quite particular, uh, quite uh, considerable part is in red, but it is below the threshold of 20% of uh, Finland. Uh, now, next we can see what happening, uh, how this spatial threshold of 20% is exceeded during the year. And here is example of Gulf of Finland. And uh, what you see here is two assessments made for 125 hertz and for fish. We see that in GS, we never attain this uh, lobe value of 20%. As for uh, masking, it is exceeded for since January up to May. And it is also attained in December. So for quite considerable part of the year, we have this exceedance of 20 dB on more uh, than 20% of the Gulf of Finland. And next slide is for uh, marine mammals. For marine mammals, uh, disturbance or total uh, sound pressure level is never attaining lobe value. As for uh, masking, it is also not attaining uh, lobe. We can see some um, attaining sometimes 10%, but not more. However, if we consider that 20 dB excess level is too much, and 12 dB is also quite considerable portion of acoustical energy, in that case, uh, the, this change, this picture will change, and we will see that effectively for if we look for 20 dB as 
uh, threshold uh, lobe value. Effectively, in the Gulf of Finland, we also have facing some problems. But uh, nevertheless, it was assessment for one year and for one particular month, and it can be different for other uh, months and other years to come. Uh, now, for the effects, uh, what effect may, might it have to the fish? Uh, first of all, we do, if we look to the spawning grounds, spawning grounds for Baltic herring are ma mainly uh, next to the coast. And if you look to the right, excess level in, near, the, uh, near the coast is non-existent. So low frequency noise do not propagate in very low shallow water uh, where spawning of the Baltic herring is taking place. And this table is showing you overview of uh, all the assessment of the Baltic Sea, including Gulf of Finland on the first row. So as I said, for marine mammals, according to uh, metrics and lobe values that we are using, uh, according to our criteria, uh, in Gulf of Finland, uh, marine mammals are in good environmental status, but fish is not. And this is all. In conclusion, I should say that this assessment was made based on TG Noise uh, work group and HELCOM recommendations. Uh, and Baltic Sea marine mammals are more sensitive to high frequency, which do not propagate as far as it do low frequency sound. And for this reason, it's not attaining spatial threshold. Baltic herring spawn in shallow coastal waters where they are not affected by low frequency sound. And the consequences of disturbing fish outside spawning areas are not clear for us now at this moment, especially when compared to the consequences of, for example, fishing pressure, which is quite considerable in case of, of fish in the Baltic Sea. That's all for me. Thank you.